Neener, neener, neener. What's going on guys, Pixelated here, back at it again with another review. Today we're looking at these low top kicks right here that you most likely missed for whatever reason, probably because of the lack of promotion, which shocks the shit out of me. You'll see why during this video, it's the Nike Air Hirachi Drift. Now, I know my jeans are a travesty in this video. Look, I'm sorry, but once you're out to shoot the video, you don't go back. Don't rub it in, alright? Now, back to the video. This sneaker released only recently. The first iteration released on January 25th, which is literally a week ago. Week ago, week ago. 2015 music meme references aside, I don't know when this colorway Released, but I'm sure it released shortly after. It's a modern and more edgy take on the classic Nike Hirachi silhouette. Also, I apologize in advance if I sound different. I'm sick, so you might hear me coughing up a loogie here and there. Ah, just kidding. I edited out all of them. At least I think I did. Moving on, a little history about the original Nike Air Hirachi. It was introduced and released about 26 years ago. I don't know this based on experience because I was potentially a fetus at the time of its release. Sorry for the imagery. The original Hirachi was designed by iconic Nike designer Tinker Hatfield back in 1991, where the design was actually influenced by water skiing footwear that's why you always see neoprene on them bad boys the shoe was wildly successful when it came out and it seems although nike has revamped the design with another modified version of the classic shoe they're leaving a lot of key things the same we'll get into that in a bit i was actually able to get my pair off nike's website these shoes aren't wildly priced so instead of emptying out your wallets you just lighten the load a little they sell for 165 canadian dollars and 140 us dollars and nike still has full stock of these so definitely grab them if you like them they're supremely underrated shoes for their price point and if you're a tech wear junkie, these are definitely down your lane. As for sizing, I did go true to size. I copped a size 10, which is my true size. At first, I thought they were a tad too tight and had to go half a size up, but I wore them for a few minutes and I don't know if they broke in or not or if I got used to it, but they fit perfect. I'm a wide footer and these fit perfect for me at true to size. It might get a little uncomfortable though with thicker socks, so I'd recommend going half up if you're a hashtag duck feet gang like me. Like a little room in your shoe or plan to wear them with really, really thick socks. Otherwise, true to size was fine for me. The upper of this shoe is made of a handful of materials, some you'll recognize from the previous Hirachi. The toe box is made of this olive colored mesh that almost looks like the ballistic mesh you see on the Special Field Air Force Ones, but it's not nearly as tough or waterproof. One thing I noticed was water really seeps through this toe box quickly, so if you plan on wearing them in the rain, Good luck fam. But the all black neoprene section of the upper, which is pretty much the rest of the upper, actually deflects water pretty well. It's not waterproof, but not once did I feel any water or any of the snow melting and seeping through that end of the shoe. Overall, I'm actually impressed with these shoes' performance in the snow. Not something I was expecting, but it definitely holds its own in this weather. The ankle collar is really snug as well, a comfortable snug fit, so it prevents any snow or water from getting inside the shoe also. The shoe is really surprisingly useful compared to a lot of shoes I've worn, at least for multi-weather purposes. The all black neoprene upper has these little metal nublets on it giving it a more military tech wear feel you've got black pull tabs on the heel and the tongue of the shoe very useful got the rubber hirachi logo on the tongues as well we have these black overlays on the toe box for more firmness and toe protection. We have the rubber heel cage in olive green with an elastic heel strap with Nike printed on it in raised rubber. This is probably the most noticeable design cue they've maintained from the original Hirachi design. A lot of people that saw the photo I took of these or saw me wearing them thought they were Hirachis before I told them, which they are, albeit a spin-off model, but they could tell mainly because of that heel counter, even though they haven't seen the entire silhouette before. The design language just screams Hirachi regardless, so you still have that familiarity there. Now the coolest Part of this shoe is this customizable lacing system. The shoe comes with these thin olive rope laces that run through these loops in the midfoot that if you see me pull them, you can see the loops pull out and create more tension for a better fit. This is Nike's famed flywire technology, but there's a kick. The shoe comes with these separate lace locks that you can attach at will and lace the shoes your own way. And I love that about this shoe. I already told you guys how much I love customizable lacing. And when companies do something like that, it's great to see Nike doing this as well. So pretty much you hook these lace locks onto the side of the shoe, then you can pull the laces through to lace the shoe through these lace locks not only do i think this is a useful feature allowing less lace to be dangling around the sneaker it also makes the shoe look that much more badass it makes the already angular shoe more angular and more geometric and if you've been paying attention in the video i'm actually wearing one shoe without the lace locks and one shoe with the lace locks comment below and let me know what you think about it apparently you can also wear the shoe without the laces so there's that option if you're into it but that's definitely not for me and finally we have this nike air foam midsole in the cement like colorway I don't want to say cement gray because it has a slight warm look to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and say this because it's true and you'll need to know this. This midsole truly surprised me. 
I don't know what consistency Nike used with this midsole foam, but it's actually soft and extremely comfortable. Like there are times in this video where I purposely jump up and land on my heels to test out how soft and comfortable the shoe is. Comment down below when you saw me do it in the video. And honestly, you can feel the shock absorption more so than many other shoes. It's really impressive for something that's using technology that's been around for decades. I'd be hard pressed to say I haven't felt any Nike shoe that's like this in a long time. On top of that, the treads on this outsole also help you keep grip on wherever you're walking. Now, while they won't perform a amazing in snowstorms or something like that. These aren't even winter shoes, so definitely don't go out wearing these in extreme cold weather. But in conditions like what you see in this video, I was able to keep myself balanced and experience no slippage while also keeping my feet warm. So for comfort, I think these shoes are amazing. They're super light, don't use fancy materials, so they're not running up your wallet and provide an extremely comfortable walking experience. And if you're into tech wear like acronym, Nike Lab, some Y3 stuff in that general look, which usually is mad expensive and will leave you in debt like no tomorrow unless you're making racks and are willing to spend a grand on a jacket, a grand on your pants, and a grand on your shoes. But if you're into tech wear, but the prices scare the shit out of you, because they definitely scare the shit out of me, these shoes are for you. They're affordable and pull off that look flawlessly. The only gripe I have with this shoe is the mesh toe box. It just feels cheap to me, and initial iterations of the shoe actually have a suede toe box, which is higher quality and would probably help protect from water a little better. Although it'll probably ruin the suede over time. Not waterproof, but it definitely gets better protection. Let me know what you guys think about these sneakers in the comment section below. Hello. Also, side note, I'm going to start posting different kinds of videos on this channel other than sneaker reviews. So if there's something you want to see, definitely let me know in the comment section below. I want to know what you guys want to see. Catch you later. Pixelated is Techwear God.